Hello there and welcome to Mind Boggles. Today we're going to talk about the four sides of personal boundaries. You go, what the heck is that? Now what's he up to? Well, you ever feel like sometimes people take advantage of you and you just don't know quite how to say no or they, they, they steal your time or sometimes they pile more and more stuff on your, on your desk? You think, man, how can I, how can I stop having people uh, walk over the top of me? Well, personal boundaries is a difficult area for a lot of people because a lot of folks don't know how to say no or back off in a very gentle way. We're going to talk about the four sides of personal boundaries that might be helpful. Some of this, for me, comes out of the uh, area of um, working with people uh, who are older and they're caregivers. Because right now, uh, I'm the owner of Flamingo Home Care with my wife, Sheila. So we're kind of tuned to this area of having people have their boundaries violated, meaning the caregiver usually winds up getting sick and dies before the person who's the real client. I think, what? I had no idea that was going on. Well, it does. It, it happens all the time. So one of the things, if you happen to be a caregiver taking care of your mom or dad or your grandfather, you got to really be careful here and watch yourself. I would encourage you to Google, go on the computer, and Google health issues for caregivers. You find a lot of them have their personal boundaries violated constantly and causes a lot of trouble. For example, 91% of family caregivers are in poor health and depressed. 91%. Caregivers have twice the rate of heart attacks as the average person. They also have a higher risk of cancers. Women who spend only nine hours of caregiving double the risk of heart attacks. So the, the bottom line is that it causes tremendous pressure and stress if you're a caregiver. And some uh, statistics I've found on the net will, will say that caregivers can actually lose 10 years of their life from caregiving. Now, if you've never taken care of anybody, this may not be make any sense to you, but if you've taken some time to take care of your mom or dad who are in their 60s, 70s, 80s, or 90s, you start realizing, whoa, this is tough work. This is hard. So how can you, as the caregiver, take care of yourself? Because if you go down, then your mom or dad or grandfather is going to really be in deep trouble. So what I want to get at here today is how to set up boundaries in your life not just for caregivers, but just in general, because when people violate our boundaries, we wind up getting stressed. And a lot of times, the person over here doesn't realize they're walking across our boundaries. So we'd have to be clear about this. So one of the things, uh, well, these four, that you might be aware of is take more time. A lot of people, they're pushing, they're going too hard, and they say, well, geez, I got so much to do, I can't get it all done today. So you take on more and more and more tasks. Well, part of it is saying, no, let me take more time. I'm not going to work till midnight tonight. I'm going to quit at five or four or three. Go to the beach. Somehow stop the, the, the squirrel cage treadmill and take more time. Work slower rather than work faster to catch up. No, just the reverse. Begin to work slower. Deliberately take more time. This is tough to do, by the way, because your tendency is to want to keep working faster and faster, trying to catch up, and you realize, I'll never catch up. So part of it is to take more time. In some teachings, they talk about if you live in an environment that's crazy, to be well-adjusted is crazy. <laughs> so stop doing crazy things. Stop working yourself to death, working faster and faster and faster. So take more time. The second one, do less. Okay? Don't do it all. Take the deliberate, conscious effort to do less instead of more. Because caregiving, for example, is endless. You can't do it all. And it doesn't have to be caregiving. It could be at work. If you continue to work harder, People keep piling more stuff on your desk, don't they? Because you'll, they say, well, give it, to, give it to John or give it to Sue. They'll get it done. Now, the person next to you might have their desk all cleaned off, and you have this huge pile. Do less. The idea here is trying to find a balance between what works for you, where your life starts to flow. 
you keep your health, you keep your sanity, you reach a level where you're like, whoa, I'm starting to get tense and stressed and all strung out here. Well, you're like, let me just try to do less here. Tough to do. Third one, ask for some help. You know, uh, ask for help from your person that works next to you or ask for help from your, from your family to help with you with caregiving, whether, whether it's to send money or have somebody come over once in a while, take a break. But ask for help. There's no benefit by being a martyr and doing everything on your own by yourself. It's usually lethal. So part of this is learn to ask for help. Say, no, this doesn't work for me. I could use some help here. Take more time, do less, ask for help. The first three things. And the fourth one, which is the tricky one, is you gotta learn to say no. <laughs> no, right? Well, for most of us, that's, that's rude, or you're not gonna hurt someone's feelings. So it's like, how can I say no gracefully? As opposed to, no, stop the, well, could you say, no, this doesn't work for me. How about we do it this way? Or how about we do it that way? But learning to say no, you know. For some people, that is absolutely a heart ripper because you never say no to anybody. Consequently, people keep piling stuff on you, expecting you to do everything. So learning to say no is the fourth one, and it's a big one how to say no, and say no gracefully, uh, as opposed to, doggone it, get away from me, you bum. You could say, no, that doesn't work for me. That's a very simple phrase. This just doesn't work for me. How about we do it this way? You make a suggestion, do it a different way. But hold out that hand. No, 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 no this doesn't work. Tough, learning to say no, that's a tough one. Anyway. The four sides of personal boundaries that I hopefully will help you in your life is take more time, do less, ask for help, and learn to say no. And if you do those four things, you might find that uh, life might get a lot easier for you, and you will also help the people around you learn what works for them too. Like a lot of times they, don't, they didn't realize that they were violating your boundaries until you tell them. Right? So now they can be a, a, a more healthy friend to you. you know, some people won't because they don't care about your boundaries. Well, they're not your friends anyway. But these four things, if you can do that, hopefully your life will be more peaceful, it'll be more centered, you'll have more life to live the life that you want. The four sides of personal boundaries. Hope you enjoyed it. Today, do something good for yourself, and if you get a chance, do something good for somebody else too. Till next time, see you later.